for one question for Andrew and another question for Francois. Uh, I loved Andrew's presentation, but the message of uh, caution, I know in your conclusion you, you, had, uh, you were quite uh, pragmatic, but the, 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 the message that is coming is that redistribution might be a problem. And uh, this is particularly concerning because uh, we think that uh, if inequality is bad for growth, then the way, or bad for growth and for society, the way we have to do it is to redistribute. And if redistribution itself is a problem, what are we left with? And uh, I go to your analysis is that um, uh, when you came to the, to the analysis of growth spell, you said you had excluded some observations, and this is cross-country observations that you have excluded. And we know that most of the countries with less uh, data are also those countries that are, could be highly unequal and developing. The question is whether you have systematically excluded what will have given you a, a contrary view of your analysis. Uh, I don't know if I have time to ask question from Fran to Francois. Okay, let me ask a brief question, Francois. Uh, your presentation is uh, quite uh, uh, mind-provoking. I want to ask about uh, the future of fight against inequality. I'm from Oxfam. Uh, I, I, I do research for Oxfam. And we've been uh, talking a lot about fight against inequality in the Davos. And you've presented that many more people are coming up with fight against inequality projects, including even Obama in the future. But you've also said that uh, it will be more difficult to do that kind of, uh, to fight against inequality. So my question is, are these programs premature? Should we wait? Is it that we don't know enough in terms of instruments to fight against inequality? What kind of world are we going to see when everybody gets to fighting against inequality without knowing what kind of instruments to use to fight against inequality? Thank you. Let's see. There, I think there was one right behind here. Mine is very quick, and it's to the IMF presentation. I know that you are using your cross-section data, and we know that the, this kind of study is so sensitive. Although you are urging that you have checked robustness through the specification, how if you change the sample size, maybe drop some countries, how if you change the period, how if you change even the definition of inequality, do you think still you remain with the same finding, so stick to the same implications? That's number one. Number two, which I think is much more interesting, you sort of arguing that there is a causality. But again, I know this is, this is in simple panel concession data, where you do a lot of averaging. There is, a lot of things going in which you don't know. Unless you have time series, you focus on only one country or one variable, few variables, so you can establish causality. How strong you your argument that you are trying to establish causality in this sort of regression? Thanks. Okay, think one over there. Uh, yes, this is a question for uh, Francois Bourguignon. Um, uh, I, I might have missed it, and we didn't see the table of contents for the 2A and 2B handbooks up there very long. But I was wondering if um, uh, they include uh, anything on uh, efforts to estimate the world uh, distribution of income, wealth, uh, the level of poverty in the world as a whole that you and others have uh, been involved in working on, or should we wait for um, 2C? <laughs> okay, Mr. Minister. Just uh, find very interesting presentations. Just one quick question for Andrew. Uh, you uh, quite interesting this uh, use of market and after uh, taxes and transfers uh, redistribution. But why, why don't you also use in the, your regression? Because when you're doing redistribution, you, you are measuring there the effective. But, you know, you, like in the case of Brazil, you have a huge tax burden, you make a huge effort, and we actually don't change that much the Gini. So maybe to throw in the regression something on the, on the effort, you know, the, like the, 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 the size of the state, the size of transfers, because this may, may be not reflected in the, in the uh, uh, actual redistribution observed. Okay, 
Andy, you want to you want to start? Sure. So let me start with the last one first, just because it's right in my mind. I mean, that's an excellent suggestion. I can't rem you know, usually the size of government comes in negatively in these regressions. And I suspect that would be the case, that if we threw in size of government, it would still be negative. So there's a nice – and we could also – we want – I think it would be useful to look more carefully at – one could imagine constructing an efficiency of redistribution concept by – and I've, we've done some graphs relating the amount of Gini change to, say, the size of government or the share of social spending. But we know that so much of government is not even meant to be uh, – uh, is not meant to be redistributive, you know, military spending or something like that. But even, even within social spending, it's well known that lots of education, most education spending in a sense in poor countries is not redistributive and so on. But we could, we could look at that. And it's worth doing. Um, on the first question – I should have said uh, the views expressed in this presentation by me are not those of the IMF or, or IMF policy necessarily. Uh, uh, and, and we had, you know, it was not, but I am, you know, at the IMF, and, and we had, it, it, after we wrote the paper, when we wrote our blog entry, uh, we spent many days internally in the institution discussing the, the wording of the blog entry to get the message just right. Uh, so it is still kind of controversial uh, uh, within the IMF in some ways. But, but the, what we're trying to say, what Jonathan Ostry and I are trying to say is that the aggregate data do not suggest cause for inaction on redistribution, even if you're worried about growth. Of course, you have to be worried about the details. I, we have another IMF paper, or not we, but there is another IMF paper on how to redistribute, how to do it more efficiently. It's clearly critically important, as we heard this morning and so on, but, but that, that's the, the, the takeaway message is not meant to be <coughs> caution, it's just you have to, you know, apply it cautiously. Um, we didn't uh, select samples for results. We, we did, uh, uh, for example, the, one of our restricted samples is the one that Frederick Solt suggests to use. He has his own restriction of the sample where he thinks you'd get decent redistribution data, and that's the restricted sample I showed there is his restrictions. He throws out – it's true that when you um, restrict the sample, you tend to lose more developing countries. And we have limited ability to check and see if our results are true by continent and things like that because it's just you run out of data. It's not just the OECD or the non-OECD that's driving the results, but beyond that, it's, it's hard to say. We do use time series and cross-country variation. It's a panel for the growth regressions, and you need both. Uh, to, to, get, to get the results. And certainly to do anything about causality, you need, we need the time series uh, measure. Um, and I will, uh, I, I will actually respond very briefly to, in a way to, in, at least it's not really a comment on me, but something Francois said about theory. Obviously our paper is guilty of uh, too little use of theory and perhaps to uh, many other sins, but that's one of them. We, it, it's hard to do both right. We have a project that's financed uh, partly through our, uh, some cooperation with the UK's DFID where we're trying to take macro models on a specific country and put in enough richness and heterogeneity to confront distributional data and talk about the effects of real exchange rates on distribution and vice versa. And that's taken us a couple of years and we don't really have a paper yet, so it's hard. <coughs> I'll stop here. As well? Yes, thank you. Um, maybe I would uh, like to start with a few uh, remarks on uh, what uh, Marcelo said and what uh, Andy said. About uh, the point by Marcelo that when you look at the uh, size of the government and you want to look at, and you say that there is not very much, Im maybe not very much impact on the uh, change in the, the growth inequality between uh, pre-redistribution and post-redistribution uh, income. This is uh, true, but the problem is that when you look at post-redistribution, you are missing a very important part of uh, the government expenditures. You are missing all the public spending. So if you want to do that, you should get into what is happening with uh, education expenditures and things like that. And maybe the, the picture would be completely different. So this is a very, very important point. Again, this is an issue of consistency of the concept that, uh, that, 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 were, you, that, that were you using. On uh, 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 the point by uh, Andy, I didn't um, mean to say that because you were presenting this paper, you were uh, representing the IMF. But I remember that uh, maybe for the first time in the uh, WIO, in the World Economic Outlook 2007, there was a chapter on uh, uh, inequality in, in the world. And this was the kind of uh, 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 signal uh, I was uh, emphasizing. 
Uh, okay, uh, and on uh, two little theory, I mean, this is something that uh, we, uh, we hear, uh, uh, we see very, very uh, often. In the, uh, one of the examples that I could not uh, uh, cover, uh, the example of uh, technical change, many people would tell you, look, because there is a skilled bias technical change, then the, uh, wage, uh, the wage skill ratio has to increase uh, because of that. This is not true. It has to shift upward, but at some stage it should stop to increase, even though the technical progress is continuing. Basically, because there is a supply uh, uh, response. And uh, this is exactly the kind of uh, too little theory that uh, I am uh, uh, trying to, 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 uh, to stress. Now, on the, well, uh, uh, on, on the first question about uh, the kind of pessimistic uh, view that uh, I, I, I expressed. Uh, the, the point to that uh, today, I mean, again, we have to make a big distinction between developed countries where the redistribution system is quite uh, uh, developed, uh, for some people even overdeveloped, uh, uh, and uh, developing countries where there is still a huge margin to do uh, redistribution. Uh, the point we are, what, what we are facing today in uh, developed countries is the fact that maybe this is technical change, maybe this is uh, something else, uh, but there, there are forces toward more inequality uh, uh, in, uh, the, uh, in those economic systems. And we would like, in some cases, to be able to uh, uh, go counter to that uh, increase in inequality, and this is where the instruments uh, are uh, uh, limited, simply because we cannot anymore increase the uh, income tax rate uh, as we want simply because we see that there is more inequality. This is something uh, that uh, uh, cannot be done because immediately we know that capital will uh, flow uh, to the uh, neighboring country or people uh, will, uh, flow, uh, will uh, leave the country. In France, we have one of our uh, movie stars uh, who decided, uh, uh, Gérard Depardieu, who decided one day to go to live to Russia. Okay, because of that, because you say, okay, I'm paying too much tax, this is enough, and uh, we also know that uh, there are uh, some uh, uh, suburbs in uh, uh, Brussels where uh, people are essentially French people living there, okay, because they are uh, 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 trying to avoid uh, uh, taxes. So this is something which is developing, and the only way we can uh, go against it is to find some kind of international cooperation in uh, fighting tax havens, etc., etc., There is something of this type going on. I mean, the uh, attack of uh, the uh, United uh, States uh, government uh, uh, on uh, UBS, uh, and in general in, on Switzerland, is something of this type. And because of that, uh, uh, Germany and France and the UK are uh, following suit. Sweet. So this may be the uh, direction, but this is the kind of constraint that we are facing. In the same way, if we want to improve the distribution pre-redistribution, then the only thing which is left is education. But when you, have, uh, when you are in countries where the level of education, when the, mean, when the average level of education is already very high, it is very difficult to, uh, make more, uh, to create more, more equality in that way. It is in that sense that I'm saying that instruments in, uh, uh, to fight additional inequality in developed countries are uh, becoming uh, much uh, uh, scarcer. Finally, on the world distribution of income, yes, of course, there is a chapter on the global uh, distribution of income, uh, uh, and, uh, which is uh, written by uh, Sudi Ranon and uh, uh, Paul Siegel. And uh, uh, which is a survey of, uh, of, of that literature. All right. Thank you very much. And thank you for very nice presentations and a, a good discussion. I, I would have hoped we could have continued, but there will be plenty of time to speak to both Andy and Francois during the day. So, with that, uh, join me in a big hand for the presenters.